with the completion of the classic American block, my fictional version of Creed Colorado is finally starting to take shape, but there is still a major gap I need to fill. Welcome back to my channel, and as always, thanks to my subscribers. Ever since I added my layout extension two years ago, I've been working on the plan for my town of Creed, Colorado. A signature building I'd like to include is the station. Here are some photographs of the former Creed station as it exists today. Bantam Model Works makes a beautiful model of the Chama Depot, which is remarkably similar in looks and size to the Creed station. See the photo inset. The only problem is this. The model has a huge footprint, about 6 inches by 18 inches, which overwhelms my tiny version of Creed. I considered removing portions of the Chama kit to compress the structure to a better size, but the tab and slot construction of this kit makes that a very difficult task. So I decided I would have to build my Creed station from scratch. I based my design on the appearance of the Creed station as it exists today, but modified slightly to bring it a little closer to the appearance of the Chama Depot model, which I will someday use in the town of Alamosa, and the Monero Depot, which is currently in service in my HO scale version of Del Norte, Colorado. I reduced the building dimensions from 28 feet by 100 feet to 24 feet by 70 feet, about 70% of the size. That reduced the station footprint to 4 inches by 10 inches, which fits my small layout much better. But before I committed a lot of time and materials, I decided to build a mock-up of the smaller station. This would allow me to see how the building fits in with its surroundings. I built the walls from one 8 inch foam core sheet, which is readily available, fairly inexpensive, and easily cut. After cutting the walls, I glued them to a foam core base, and I glued roof beams to the wall peaks using 3 16 inch strip wood. Then I cut roof pieces from cardstock and glued them in place. This gave me a good idea of how the station would fit into my layout. You can spend time dressing up your mock-up by painting it, pasting on window images, and adding roof textures, but in my experience, if the mock-up looks too good, you'll never get around to building the actual structure. Looking at how my mock-up fit into the scene, I saw that I needed to make the platform five feet wider to push the structure a little farther away from the tracks. I also decided I needed to extend the gabled roof overhangs by about a foot to provide room for the gable trim. Once I had the building's dimensions finalized, I pulled out some board and batten styrene sheets from Evergreen. The size and spacing of the battens will require some slight adjustments to the lengths of the walls. After some careful measurements and arithmetic, I created wall templates using the free Inkscape software. I drew all my walls full size, then when I had the completed walls, I scaled them down by a factor of 87 to get HO scale. Then I placed the walls on the paper for printing. With the wall templates printed and cut out, I placed them on a sheet of board and batten styrene to be sure they fit, and to get the best use of the material with minimum waste. Be sure to examine your board and batten material carefully. The battens on my sheets were not parallel with the sheet edges, nor were they perpendicular with the sheet ends, so I had to carefully trim the full sheet to get square edges with perpendicular battens. Here are the cut wall pieces. Notice that I had to cut the long walls in two sections because the board and batten material was not wide enough to fit the entire long wall. I will splice these two pieces together before I assemble the building. Also notice that I have adjusted the lengths of every wall so that each wall ends in a full width board. The next batten has been trimmed off. The reason for this will become clear in a few minutes. This adjustment means the overall building dimensions will change by a few scale inches, not enough to notice. The one exception to this was the long wall extension. That piece has a complete batten on one end that adjoins the other long wall piece. This will give the illusion that the finished long wall is a single piece. Last, notice that I have cut the two platform side long wall pieces six scale inches shorter than the other walls. The platform wall must sit flush on the platform, while the remaining walls will extend six scale inches down over the top of the foundation. 
Here are the three walls which will form the bay window. I cut these from the scraps left over from cutting the large wall pieces. I have taped rectangles of paper to the backs of the walls. These rectangles are the size of the Tichy window openings. I created the rectangles using Inkscape, printed them out, and cut them to use as needed. It's hard to see in the video, but I drew a line across all three wall pieces, 30 inches up from the bottom edge. This ensures the windows will be vertically aligned. Next, I cut carefully around the paper rectangles to start cutting the window openings. After you've cut all four sides, the paper falls off, but it is easy to trace the cuts until the window blank can be removed. Then you can insert the window to be sure the fit is correct. Trim the opening if necessary to allow the window to fit straight in the opening. With the window in place, a close examination shows the window is not quite flush with the wall. The battens keep the window from sitting flush against the wall. These battens need to be removed at the top and bottom of the window openings. Score through the battens with a number 11 blade, then use a number 17 blade to chisel off the batten ends. This sounds more difficult than it is. After you've done a few, you'll develop the technique. When you've finished, the window casting will fit snugly against the wall. In this view, you can see that I've also trimmed the battens along the top edge of the wall to make a space to install the fascia. Installing the fascia is simple once the battens have been removed. Just glue the fascia in place and trim the ends where they protrude beyond the wall ends. I cut the angles at the peak of the roof by laying the fascia piece along the Inkscape wall template and making a vertical cut. Next, I glued corner posts to the peaked wall, flush with the wall edges. I used 1 8 inch square styrene for the corner posts. These posts provide additional gluing surface to make your building stronger. Once the glue is cured, use your razor saw to trim the posts flush with the top of the wall. At this point, I realized I had made a mistake when I cut my walls. Since the side walls are the same height as the adjoining wall ends, and since the side walls will attach to the corner posts, the tops of the side walls will extend above the roof line of the peaked wall, as you can see here. This mistake applies to my main wall sections as well. At this point, the easiest fix was to sand an angle into the side walls so the profile conforms to the peaked front wall. I had to sand carefully because I did not want to reduce the height of the back side of the wall. With the sanding complete, I trimmed the battens and installed the fascia on the side walls. Then I glued the bay window together, taking care that all three walls were square in all three dimensions. When the assembly had dried, I glued the corner trim in place. Now you can see why I cut the battens off of each end of every wall. The corner trim takes the place of those missing battens. Once the glue has set, you can cut the ends of the corner trim flush with the top and bottom of the walls. Fabricating the main walls follows exactly the same steps as the bay window, with two precautions. First, remember to draw the baseline for the window bottoms, 36 inches up from the bottom edge, on the two end walls and the street side wall to allow for the additional height of these walls. Second, be sure to cement the bottom ends of the corner posts six scale inches up from the bottom of the walls to allow the building to sit level on the base. Before cementing the fascia across the long wall, it's time to splice the two pieces together. I used my true sander to make sure the wall ends aligned perfectly. Then I glued a small rectangle of plastic to the back of the walls, forming a splice. After the glue had set, I glued the fascia boards to the long walls. Now it's time to glue the bay window in position. Since I planned to install an interior, I had to cut an opening in the main wall. I made the opening just a little smaller than the bay window dimension to ensure I had a good gluing surface to attach the bay window. Notice that I have also glued a length of strip styrene to the main wall at the back of the bay window. The strip will serve as the rear support for the bay window roof. With all of the walls complete, it's time to assemble the structure. I started, as I always do, by carefully gluing two adjacent walls together. I made sure that both walls were vertical and resting on a level surface. I made sure the two walls formed a right angle 
and that there was the correct space at the outside corner for the corner trim piece. When I was satisfied that everything was properly aligned, I cemented the walls together. When the glue had dried, I attached the corner trim piece. Once I had the first two walls joined, I placed the remaining two walls in position, making all of the joints as square and as true as I could. Again, I ensured all the walls were resting on a level surface and that the corners all had the correct space for the outside corner trim. Notice that I have put scale 6x6 inch braces underneath the platform sidewall to allow for the shorter wall on that side. When I was satisfied with the fit, I glued everything together and added the corner trim. Next I turned my attention to the base. I used 20 thousandths inch styrene sheet, which I cut very carefully to just fit the inside long dimension of the building and to include the width of the platform. This sheet will be glued to the top of the foundation. For the foundation, I used dry stack stone material from Monster Model Works. I cut three inch high strips from the sheets and joined them at the corners with the stone corner pieces. When the foundation had cured, I primed it and painted the stone using washes of yellow ochre, burnt sienna, raw sienna, and raw umber. When the washes had dried, I brushed weathering pastels in random spots along the foundation. Before assembling the foundation, I masked and painted the platform area. This paint will later be covered with strip wood. Then I glued the styrene base to the top of the foundation, taking care that everything was aligned. I wanted my station interior to have a light oak floor, and the easiest way to achieve this is by using a printed texture on self-adhesive paper. I downloaded an image of oak flooring and copied and pasted it into a document, scaling the image so the boards were about four to six inches wide. I cut a piece to fit my interior and carefully placed it in position on the styrene base. Later on, I will cut notches at the left end corners so the structure corner posts will sit flush on the styrene base. I fabricated a simple partition to divide the passenger waiting room for the baggage area. I cut a ticket window in the partition and added a door and some bars across the window. Finally, I installed some supports, four cross braces which will eventually support the roof, and wall-mounted supports which will allow me to install ceiling lighting after the building interior is complete. At last, it is time to start painting. Here is the main structure after painting. I used Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch 2X Marigold. Here is the interior partition, painted with the door, the wainscoting, a wall clock, and a travel poster, all glued in place. I painted the exterior doors using the same color. Then I masked off the door panels with Tamiya masking tape. After a quick seal coat of marigold, I sprayed the doors using Painter's Touch Espresso. When the paint had dried, I peeled off the masking tape. This is an easy way to paint the door trim in a contrasting color. Finally, I painted the windows using the same espresso color. I weathered the main structure with a series of raw umber washes. It's important to build up the color slowly using several washes. It's easy to add more color with another wash, but it's not so easy to remove color. I weathered the windows by dry brushing a light tan color on the edges and then by applying a wash of the same color. With the windows and doors glazed and cemented into the walls, I cemented the building onto the base. I was careful to be sure the building was sitting level on the base and that the walls were tight against the foundation on all three sides. I cemented the interior partition in position. This partition serves two purposes. It encloses the finished interior and it provides additional bracing for the long walls and for the roof. Next, I added wood planks to the platform. I stained about 200 inches of HO scale 2x8 wood and cut the pieces just a little too long. I will trim the ends later. Then I scored a few lines through the brown paint to help me keep the planks parallel and applied transfer tape to the platform. The adhesive film from the transfer tape is extremely thin which helps keep the planking smooth and level. After that, it was simply a matter of applying the planks, one by one, taking care to keep each plank tight against the previous plank, 
and keeping them parallel to my guidelines. This is a tedious process, but the results are well worth the effort. In order to keep this video to a reasonable length, I'm going to stop here. Next time, I'll describe adding the interior details, the lighting, the roof, and the building trim. I'd like to hear your preference on whether you'd prefer to see a single long video or several shorter videos when I cover large projects like this one. Please go to my Community tab and complete the survey. I have included links to all the products mentioned in this video in the comments below. As always, I would love to hear your comments and questions. If you want to see more videos of this type, be sure to subscribe and hit that like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.